Independent conservative journalist Faith Goldie was assaulted at the American border by Antifa. Having been assaulted at work by a left-wing man because I'm a conservative female journalist trying to do my job, I obviously have a lot of opinions about this. My former rebel colleague Faith Goldie was attacked by Antifa at the Quebec border with the United States. It happened at Roxham Road. Now that area has become well known as a point of entry for migrants fleeing possible deportations in the United States and they make their illegal entry into Canada there. An anti-illegal immigration protest was scheduled to happen there and then the violent left-wing group Antifa also showed up to clash with anti-illegal immigration groups. Now, riot police were there, as well as journalists and camera crews from every mainstream media outlet in Canada. And so was Faith. She was live streaming, periscoping with her cell phone just about every interaction and everything that she could see happening around her that day. And it's lucky that she did because she captured her own assault on video. Now, I want you to pay attention to Faith's demeanor, what she was doing and what she was saying when she was violently attacked. This is from her periscope that she recorded that day here. So they're threatening to push me into traffic right now, completely circling us in. We're going to head out of here because this is insane and obviously the cops don't want things to escalate. I'm not going to put them... Okay, yep, we're leaving right now. Okay, we're leaving. Okay, we're leaving, guys. No, leave. We're leaving. Right we're now, leaving. Right now. Get the fuck out now. We're leaving. Good job, buddy. We're leaving. No, no, no. no. So Faith was backing away saying that she was leaving. She was, was within a few feet of riot police and yet Antifa felt so emboldened and righteous in attacking her and her male friend that they did attack them. And Antifa did it right in front of video cameras and journalists from every mainstream media outlet in the entire country. Let me show you another angle of what happened to Faith and her male companion. Remember, this is right in front of the riot police and the media here. Faith and her male friend were kicked, they were shoved, they were spat upon, Faith's friend was shoved to the ground, her phone was taken from her, and she was kicked. And the mainstream media captured all of this on video. Weird, right? Because you probably didn't hear about any of this on the 6 o'clock news. I'm going to show you what the mainstream media tweeted about what happened to Faith. Now look at this video from Angela McKenzie of CTV News, who's clearly just a few feet away from what happened to Faith and her male friend. Here. Mackenzie describes what happens to Faith as being pushed out by counter-protesters, not assaulted by Antifa, and Mackenzie's video conveniently cuts out before the violence happens to Faith, despite the video coming nowhere near Twitter's video limit. Isn't that convenient that she missed the most important part of the story happening right in front of her? This is why trust in the media is at an all-time low. And I know CTV saw all of exactly what happened to Faith. All of it. How do I know they didn't miss a second of any of it? Look at this still grab from Faith's Periscope live stream. What a poignant shot. Not because it's beautiful, but because it's 
disgusting and because this shot shows the true allegiances of the media in this country. The media is there standing shoulder to shoulder with Antifa. The media is pointing their cameras at Faith because, well, you know, they know who the real bad guy is. It's the 120 pound woman with the ideas they don't like and not the 180 pound man with a mask spitting on her and the goons who are with him kicking her and threatening her and assaulting her. Chivalry is dead, at least in the mainstream media. The journalists stood there and watched her get assaulted because for them, capturing the video of this woman they don't like, Faith Goldie, getting a beat down was more important than human decency and helping her. The mainstream media captured those visuals and then they buried the visuals and the story because they hate Faith more than they hate the violent dirtbags of Antifa and they hate Faith more than they want to tell you the truth. All of those reporters standing there were faced with a conundrum. Tell the truth or run PR for Antifa. Guess what they chose? Let me be the first to say Faith has said some controversial things, things that I wouldn't say, things that I don't often agree with, but that's it. She just says controversial things. That's all she's ever done. She just says things. She doesn't actually do anything to anyone. And we don't solve political disagreements with violence in this country. In fact, that's the whole point of a civilized society, that we get to say and think whatever we want without the threat of violence, either from the state or the people around us. And for the media, hitting people you don't agree with doesn't seem to be all that big of a deal for them. Actually, they think it's even a little bit funny. This is a tweet from Jonathan Montpetit. He is a CBC journalist and he was there when Faith was assaulted at the protest. And this is what he tweeted out after a woman, an independent journalist, was assaulted by violent left-wing thugs. He said, border demo all done, highlight for me seeing Faith Goldie get scolded by the Quebec police force for using her cell phone while driving. There's absolutely no way that Montpetit didn't know that Faith was assaulted at that protest. And his first reflex was to mock her. And that tweet was liked by CBC star Rosemary Barton and dozens of other blue check mark and other mainstream media journalists, many of whom proudly champion the issue of the free press and feminism, unless of course it's a conservative woman trying to do the job the mainstream media are just unwilling to do. I know what happens next for Faith, at least in her treatment from the mainstream media because I lived it and it happened to me already. Next comes the publication of conspiracy theories about how maybe it didn't happen to her or that maybe she had done something to instigate it or that maybe Antifa was acting in self-defense against Faith because that's the treatment I got from the mainstream media and the mainstream left in Canada after I was punched at the Women's March in Edmonton by a male feminist named Dion Buse. I was accused of provoking the punch. I was accused of not listening the first time. I was accused of making it up, even though you can clearly see what happened to me on the video I took with my camera that day. And that's why I sued Dion Buse after I was shut out of being able to give a victim impact statement at the criminal proceedings against him. I sued him in part to show the media and the perpetrators and the left wing alike that I, like Faith, don't deserve the violence and the threats against us. Secondarily, I did it to prove that we don't deserve the justifications and the trutherisms for the violence against us passed off as mainstream media news because in the end, that attack on our credibility becomes a second victimization from a crowd of people so concerned about the victimization of women with mean tweets and man spreading. And the mainstream media is collaborating with Antifa and the violent left wingers when they hide the violence being committed against the right and especially right wing female journalists by the left. I testified in court at my civil trial against Dion Buse that I thought the threats of violence would get worse if something wasn't done to take this violence against us more seriously. 
and if left-wing female journalists were being routinely assaulted at work, women's groups, journalist organizations, and the government would be standing up for them and calling for an end to the threats and to the violence. But for me and Faith and other conservative journalists who are assaulted in the course of our jobs, we can't even get conservative politicians to take the principled stance that we deserve to be safe at work too. And that silence from everyone, left and right, makes my job every day more dangerous. For The Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. What you just saw there is my daily video that I do here at The Rebel, but did you know that I have my own weekly full-length show? It's aptly called The Gun Show, and we talk about issues facing Canadian families. But to get access to my show and the rest of our incredible premium content, you've got to become a Rebel subscriber today.